Another playoff style atmosphere at MSG tonight. Knicks taking on the Bulls. Knicks trying to get back to their winning ways after a tough loss to the Suns. And they would jump out the gates hot, man. RJ Julius were in their bag, playing with a chip on their shoulder. Knicks would take an 18-point lead in the first half. But this Bulls team had something to play for, man. This team is in 11th place right now, trying to get into the playing game. Been playing fairly well without Zach Levine, and they would push the Knicks to the brink. At one point, taking a one-point lead in the third quarter. So we were looking for answers, and they were coming to fourth at the hands of one Emmanuel quickly. IQ, what it do? 11 points in six minutes would bust this thing open in the fourth. And RJ and Julius would close this thing out, man. Knicks get the W, 113 to 94. Five and one in the homestand. Sole possession of fourth place. And yeah, man, that's how you end it. Salute to Knicks Nation. Hit that thumbs up button for your squad. CP Ashley Moore, CK2K in the building. Back to our winning ways. And it wasn't easy. Definitely definitely was not easy. This bull team gave us everything they, they wanted, everything they could without Zach Levine. But give credit, man. RJ Julius, Emmanuel quickly slammed the door on him in the fourth quarter. And uh, back to our winning ways, man. CK, how you feeling, bro? Feeling like the Knicks just, uh, they wanted to keep us invested in the game because we started out the game hot and looking like we were going to blow them out for the game. But they said, no, nah, no, nah, I want you guys to sit down and watch this game a little bit more Thanks. because it got way too close for comfort. But then they ended up sealing the deal the way they did. We got Theo Pinson minutes tonight. I'm happy <laughs> tips, for it. I'm happy tips for it. Theo, the I bench. Kev, we went huh? to the bench. I said, Tapes cleared the bench. We went bench mob tonight, man. It was one of everything. one of those nights, a rare one. Tip smile. We got everything tonight, bro. Yeah, it was a, yeah. <laughs> a fun filled night. Very interesting night. Ash, how you feeling? Yeah, listen, we got a tip smile. That's a rarity. And yeah. the fourth quarter, you know, the bench came alive. It was just everything that you needed. Emmanuel quickly set things on fire. He actually, I think, you know, at one point, I want to say towards the end of the third, it was getting too close for comfort. Emmanuel quickly put his cape on and came to save the day. Big time. I mean, also, I want to speak again about how impressive RJ is because in the first yes. half, especially in that first quarter, he was just, he looked frustrated. But again, just speaking to that maturity, and I spoke about this on SNY, that RJ just has this ability that's so beyond his years to just not focus on what has already happened, not allowing himself yeah. to get caught up in the past, but focusing on each play, each possession, and how he can help this team win. And it's just so impressive for someone who's only 20 years old, having that kind of, you know, tunnel vision, Boys. that mentality. Yeah. Um, is just such a, it's such a gift and it's such a gift to have on a team and especially in a player, yeah. Julius Randall, obviously he's just doing Julius Randall things. Obi Toppin, I mean, being able to OB, see the way, yeah. being able to see the way that Derek Rose gets him involved. He, Obi shines in a game that's fast paced. And I love finally being able to see him have some place that he feels he fits in on this team. And it, it may not be for the longevity of the game, but just having these moments where he shines is just, it's its good to see because we were worried about Obi. We were yeah, worried about him there. Fact. So it's, it's nice to see him in his bag and he's really starting to get comfortable. And I think with that comfortableness, he's really starting to feel like he fits in and it's showing in the way that yeah, he plays yeah. and what he does with the amount of and, minutes and, that it does give him. Yeah. And, yeah. I, and I thought, I thought uh, as you said, you know, he really pushed past the Phoenix game because he struggled. Yeah, Phoenix yeah, yeah. game was a struggle for him, him and Julius, and I felt like they both, especially RJ, really came out with a chip on his shoulder and really wanted to get aggressive and attack early. And, and I thought that that's what he did. Had a, had a couple mistakes, you know. We first for the first time, I feel like this year we saw publicly Tibbs chew him out for a couple of defensive yeah. lapses in the first quarter, marking and beating back door twice. You saw Tibbs really uh, getting into RJ and and, uh, and hoping that he would improve. But I thought all in all, he stuck with it all night. Uh, 22 points, 9 of 15 from the floor, CK, 3 for 5 from downtown, had a couple of clutch buckets in the fourth as well. Seven boards, 
six dimes, two steals, one block. He was all over the stat sheet tonight. Plus 20 on the night for RJ. What I also liked about him, bro, was that um, the shot selection. I liked the shot mix tonight. Yes, it was on the three-point line. Yes, he attacked the rim. But he also saw some nice um, pull-up mid-range, you know, off the dribble. Something that we want to see him work on, especially going into next year. Though RJ was uh, an all overall solid performance by RJ tonight. Big time. Yeah, for sure. And again, it just speaks to RJ and, and his, um, you know, his contribution as a player. I can't speak more highly than I already do of just the way he's able to just kind of get out of his own head. That is such a gift as a player because yeah. a lot of the times that can really make or break your performance in a game. And a lot of the times people don't realize it, but you can be mm. your own worst enemy. And sometimes you see a guy, things aren't clicking for him in the first and the second that travels with him sometimes even after halftime and it's just not his night. Yeah. RJ seems to just be able to like flip this switch in his head and like, you know what, whatever it happened, I'm moving on. And it's just, you know, I, I can't be more proud of him than I already yeah. am. It's just, especially with, again, yeah. the night and day performances that we're seeing from last season to this season, just also the night and day mentality. I feel like he, he knows who he is. And yeah. all, if this was old RJ, the fact that he had a bad first quarter, he had some bad moments, the noise of the crowd, all the eyes, things like that. It, it would have gotten to him. Now you're seeing a different type of RJ, and it's just, you know, it's it's great to see. I can't say enough about it. Yep, he's developed the amnesia trait is what I say. Mm -hmm. A lot of the great players, they develop amnesia, meaning that they can take about 15 shots and make two of them, but they don't remember any of those missed shots because they know the next one is possibly going to be the one going. And RJ Barrett has definitely developed that this year. And it's funny you say he flipped the switch because that's, that's his been his thing. He does that before every game. Yeah. He flips the switch to let him know that it's game time. And you're seeing that truly come to fruition this year. And yeah. this game is spe specifically because – he got destroyed by Tom Thibodeau for everyone yeah, to see. Cameron did, was all did. up in the in yeah. his nostrils, watching him get torn yeah. up by uh, Tom Thibodeau, and he responded right away. He didn't take it. He didn't. I mean, he didn't. He didn't complain about it. He didn't, he didn't get soft about it. No, he took the note, went out there, and he had a great uh, yeah. rest of the game out there. I mean, he had a hard uh, cover in Laurie Markin, who was a bigger dude than him, and you know, but RJ Barrett took the challenge and did what he was supposed to do. So. Yeah. Love, love what RJ Bear did tonight. Love what RJ Bear does every night. This kid is 20 years old, growing before our eyes. I love it, man. Boys, love it. And, man. and it speaks to what we were talking about last show when we were talking about an identity as a player, right? right? Because right. this is one of the criticisms and one of the reasons we said that Peyton is so inconsistent is because he doesn't really have an identity of who he is as a player. I think because RJ knows who he is and also more importantly, knows who he wants to be as a player throughout his career, He's kind of able to pull himself back in. And that's why even the moments that he may be inconsistent, they're so far and in between. And he's able to kind of snap out of it. Whereas you look at a player like Peyton, he'll have one good game. And then he goes on this streak where it's like, he's just, who the heck is this person? Because this doesn't look like the person I saw where I was like rooting for him. Yeah. And that's just a lack of identity. And I think for someone, again, just 20 years old to know that about yourself and know who you want to be is just it's, it's incredible and i definitely i see the chat i definitely am a rj simp okay <laughs> put me in, put me in oh, coach so i'm the so captain good. of the rj salute. simp that is for sure salute to everybody in the chat once again hit that thumbs up button for your squads this is nick's post game live presented by manscaped cps we more ck2k um we always get to julie's last because you're just so automatic that it's almost a given these performances but so i'm gonna go next to Nerlens. I'm going to Nerlens Noel next, man. Eight points, eight rebounds, three dimes, four steals, five blocks for Nerlens Noel. Listen, man, Vucevic is a tough cover. On the one-on-one, -on -one, he's a hard cover. Knicks tried to throw everything at him. The double teams, they trapped him. They did all that they could. They had Nerlens covering. They had Randall covering. Vucevic is going to get his. He came into this game averaging 19 and 15 uh, against the Knicks. But I thought Nerlens' is help defense is where he shines, and he shined bright tonight. The steals from behind the back on Vucevic, he got him twice. Got Vucevic, got uh, um, Kobe White, got a couple yeah. other guys, five block shots in the paint for Nerlens Noel. And and uh, it was interesting to find out on the broadcast that he's now surpassed Mitch in terms of games started. So that was really interesting because I, I thought, uh -oh. yeah, I thought when they first got him in the off season, I liked the pickup because I didn't feel like we were going to be dropping off as much for Mitch in the starting lineup. And then you even saw Noel start off the preseason starting, but now he's, re he's really locked in the center position, man. And this team being in fourth place, he has a lot to do with it. 
He has a lot yeah. to do with it, bro. Real talk. You cannot understate Nerlens Noel's contributions in Mitch's absence during this whole stretch to keep this team in the playoff hunt and in fourth place in the East. Real talk. Nerland, yeah, no, 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 well. <laughs> yes. 100%. <laughs> yeah, 100%. CK, you, you say something? Yeah, no, it's just impressive, man. Nine blocks as a team. And this yeah. man was responsible for five of them, bro. Yeah. Five yeah. of those nine blocks. And, and like you mentioned, man, he's, he's he's been very integral to everything that's been going on for this team in during our win streak and just our, our, our stretch of games in the last month and some change. Shoot, since uh, Mitch has been out, you know, and he's been doing such a good job. We're having conversations about him next to Rudy Gobert and all these guys that are up there for Defensive Player of the Year, and Nerlens Noel is right there in that conversation. I don't know if he's in the conversation for Defensive Player of the Year, but when they're talking about defense and blocking, yeah. Nerlens Noel's name comes up because he's been that, you know. Uh, I, I've talked about it several times before um, the season started. He was definitely one of my favorite pickups. And, you know, it was a rough start because he wasn't really – he was looking like he was trying to find himself. But he definitely found himself. And then especially being thrown into the starting lineup the times he had to be thrown in the starting lineup, he's done a great job with it. I know the jokes are going on calling him ping pong, and, uh, <laughs> pa uh, paddle hands, yeah. or whatever y'all call him, flying yeah. hands, or whatever y'all call him. But he does the damn thing defensively. This man – Big time. Had, it, it, he, he got a, a, a checklist at this point of how many people are trying him – at the rim, and he is stopping them every single time. So, yeah, man, I know Noel has been great for us. I'm really happy that he's turned out the way he did. The two like, areas where, you know, he's deficient in, like, like I said, is going one-on-one -on -one coverage, especially with the more physical bigs like Vucevic, um, and, and then also rebounding. The, the rebounding sometimes can be an issue, so that has to be by committee. You know, Randall's got to crash the boards. RJ's got to get on there. Nerlens, Taj, Obi. It's got to be by committee as they look to uh, get into the playoff race. But overall, Noel was solid. Taj, Taj. And, and segue into this second unit, it was kind of like a tale of two halves of the second unit with RJ because um, in that second quarter, they struggled and they brought the Bulls right back into the game. And that was uh, that was where Tibbs' frustration lied. But in the fourth quarter, they delivered. And like I said, IQ really set the tone. Knicks off by one. IQ set the tone, got two of his quintessential um, foul calls that he used to get early in the season, but as the season drew on, it kind of seemed like either the league caught up to him and the refs weren't respecting him that much, but he drew two of those fouls, got a nice three-pointer, got a runner in the lane, and IQ was was the catalyst for that fourth quarter, but I also thought that Taj's rebounding and defense was key, and then obviously D. Rose running in transition with Obi, got Obi going, and that second unit really, really blew that thing open, man. Yeah, man, especially Emmanuel quickly, too. It's just like, because yeah, the first half, like, the bench just was not, they they, they didn't look like how they had yeah. looked all season long. This bench has been my favorite part. I, I, I always talk about my gig excited because the bench comes in and they always, the game speeds up. You know, you want to see what we're going to get from Obi this game. Mm -hmm. Derrick Rose, what are you going to get from him this and the third? And especially lately, like we talked about, you know, R.J. Barrett playing with this second unit is just fun to watch because R.J. Barrett then gets to flip that switch to then now playing a little bit faster and playing how he's been accustomed to playing you know throughout his, his entire career of basketball so you know see how they start a little bit <laughs> um they didn't look so good in the first half and seeing them just turn around in the fourth quarter alone see like in the fourth quarter yeah you know it, it was just tremendous to see uh and uh, on top of everything too another game with the knicks going above 110 points like yep. You know, it's just, it, it, Ali Burks is he's he's back, but he's not back yet. And you know, we're able to do this without him on the court. Five and one. It's just it it's just re really refreshing to see that this bench knows that they can turn it on at any point. Yeah. I I, I know Mayo quickly hit uh, shot two deep threes, and I wasn't even mad the second one because that thing was damn near in there. <laughs> yeah, facts. And had to just barely big facts. Out. So it's just like <laughs> uh, the fact that we have a guy that has that kind of confidence to let that thing fly confidently mm -hmm. and can actually make them like. I just the, the bench unit just it just adds another element to this team that's just so much fun that they add the defense and then all, it's just great. I, 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 bench I was mob was huge, impressed man. with them. Bench and as mob, you said, yeah. Burks is back from COVID protocol. We'll see him out yes, west. Sir. And now back we back to the rotation game. You know, Burks, IQ, Rose, Peyton, RJ, you know, how do you shuffle it around? Tibbs has got yeah. a job to do again because you have another capable playmaker, a, a capable bucket, a guy that you can go to late in games. Yeah. How do you how do you get him in here now? You know, as this team is hot and cooking going out west, it's gonna be interesting. Definitely gonna be interesting. Like uh, I said, it was enjoyable to see RJ with that second unit, but I think yeah, I think Alec Burks comes right back in and yeah. plays with them and continues it going. Yep, 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 yep. Uh, and then lastly, Julius, man, Julius was absolutely unstoppable all game. <laughs> they had 
had no answer for him. Anybody they threw at him was absolutely getting flamed out there. And so I thought you had your, your quintessential Julius 30-point game, another 30-point game for Julius, which is his 11th of the season, uh, according to Tommy Beer. Knicks are 10-1 and one in those 11 games. And uh, again, good bounce-back game from the Phoenix game for, for Julius Ash. 34 points, 7 yeah. boards, 3 dimes, 6-6 six six from uh, free throw, 4-7 from downtown. 12 or 23 overall. What would you think about him tonight? Our, um, Julius is so impressive to me. And I think uh, CK and I spoke about this on the last show is he's so impressive to me because his conditioning and the, and the way that his body just is able, he gets stronger as the game progresses. Yeah. You know how some players lose it as the game starts to progress and you get closer to the end. It's like Julius gets his powers the further the game yeah. goes. He's just so strong and his conditioning, whatever he does just works. I mean, he, he plays an exceptional amount of minutes. He's averaging, I think most in the league of minutes played close to the top. And it yeah. doesn't seem to affect him the way that it should be affecting him. And I don't know if that's also a mental thing that he's just out there to prove a point and it kind of just overrides your physical, mm -hmm. but I mean, he, it's just impressive. I mean, he really is the anchor of this team. We would not be here without him. Which is why I don't, you know, when I say that I think that Julius Randle should be in the MVP conversation, it's not because I think that he should win it. I just think that it's a it's a disrespect, it's a disservice to what he means to the New York Knicks and what he has been Fair. doing for this team and what he's been doing for himself, especially coming off the season that he had where he says he felt like he let New York down. It's just a disservice not to even have him in the conversation and to people that <laughs> for people to disrespect what he's doing and put the credit all in Tibbs' hand. Yes, Tibbs has been exceptional for this team. And again, we would not be where we are without Coach Tibbs. I mean, he has just struck a new life force into this team. But you can't credit Tibbs and not credit Julius. And that's yeah. why when I see, you know, what, who's leading in the MVP conversation, you have people like Steph Curry, who's playing exceptional basketball, one of the greatest scorers to ever play the game of basketball, one of the greatest shooters I've ever seen in my life. But to have him with the Warriors who are sitting at ninth, 10th in the West, and to not even have Julius Randle uh, that, in the That's a marketing ploy, man. It's, it's just it's so it's yeah. just so disrespectful. And that's why I ride for him as hard yeah. as I do. That, that whole it's, Steph it's, thing it's a respect a thing ploy. for me. Yeah, 100%. That, the whole Steph Curry thing is a marketing ploy. They, they, what, they get watched by 60 points last night? The Dallas... I don't. I don't even know I what think the final. It was like score. thirty-three or something. <laughs> yeah, I don't even know yeah. what the final score was. But forget that whole Steph Curry thing, man. That's 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 a marketing. <laughs> that's a marketing gimmick, stat padding gimmick, uh, in terms of the MVP race. But either way, five and one in the homestand, sole possession of fourth place, put some respect on our name. Nine games left, and now we head out west. So let's hear from the fans. Let's hear. Uh, let's get to the phone. Salute to everybody in the chat once again. Hit that thumbs up button for your squad. <laughs> The closer, a.k.a. the mayor of New York. I mean, Jay Boogie took over on the streets of New York on Monday <laughs> night. It was Jay Boogie City Monday night, man. Jay Boogie, what's good, bro? Yo, <laughs> oh, 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 man. I just had a bad dream. Oh, man. They still snoring on us. They sleeping on us. They don't believe. <laughs> we about to get ready to go on this road trip right now. But every time something something going, somebody's always talking about schedule, schedule, schedule. We can't do this. We can't do this. We can't beat this team. We can't beat this team. We can't beat that team. Every time you turn around, it wasn't 10 in a row. Forget 10 in a row. We still got 10 out, 10 out of 11. That's yeah. 10 and 1. How about that? How about the 10 inside the 35? How about yeah. the, we going into the playoffs? How about all that? How about celebrating something? Yeah. How and, about and, turning and, and, up for your team? Boogie, How about Boogie, putting a pat on the eight. back? You How about being eight, appreciative bro. of what, you, what we're doing right here? How about representing that orange and blue to the fullest? Big up, big up, big up, big up. Hit them like buttons. And when you hit them like buttons... I ain't talking about hitting that yellow thumbs up. Hit that like button up for real, man. Appreciate the team, man. Salute, 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 salute. 
great night the other night. I had a chance the first time really to sit down and talk to my man, the GM. Yeah, the general manager. CP, you looking at him. Yeah. At the same time, salute to my brother right there. Salute to my man, CK2K. And salute to the young Kim Fields. That's right. That's the squad. <laughs> salute to the Super Dave. Yeah, that's the squad. And you know who I am? The closer. Yeah, that's right. Salute, salute, salute. Big up, big up, big us, man. We get ready to get this three-day rest. Fall down for a minute. Catch a break. Get some wind. You know what I'm saying? Get some healing. You know what I'm saying? Marvin Gaye. They get some rest and healing. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Chuck D, your godfather, the, the James Brown of the rap. Had a chance to sit down and build with that brother. Oh, my God. Oh, my Lord. What a wonderful night. Good yeah, night. we still won that night. A lot of people was thinking like it was an L. No, we don't take L's. We take lessons, and we take them, and we flip them over. You know what I'm saying? That's what is about to happen. We can flip this Phoenix game. Y'all remember the same situation happened in Dallas. So what? I see you again on the West Coast. Yeah, Booker, you had a good time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, CP, you had a good four minutes out of 48. But that's okay. Sometimes, you know what I'm saying? With Julius having a bad game, RJ having a bad game, and Burks wasn't in, you know what I'm saying? And y'all just barely won that game. That's okay. I got some for you on this on this trip. We got nine games left, and with nine games left, we are not talking about lottery. We are talking about the top hey, eight, man. Top I told y'all before. We y'all didn't want to say the p word. The top eight. We are in business, man. We are solidified. <laughs> we always we we are we are completely an organization to be proud of, man. Shout out to James Dolan, and shout out all the way down to Leon Pinson. Everything else in the middle has been doing what they gotta do. I told you, this is a house that's been built. You got to have the mortar. Then you got to have the semi-blocks. Then you have to have the bricks. And that brings together a house, man. And when I say a house, I'm talking about good time. John Amos, Ford <laughs> Evans. I ain't talking about the Cosby show, because they was born to already have it. I'm talking about the good times when you have to struggle to make, make it through the day and come out peaceful at the end of the day and lay down and be happy. That's what I'm talking about. I ain't talking about waking up and everything is already spoon fed. I don't need a spoon fed. That thing is out there. So don't use spoons. You're supposed to use you're supposed to use plastic containers right now. You know what I'm saying? When you drink out that cup, don't drink out that cup in the in the store. You use a straw, you know what I'm saying? That's what's 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 going on right here, man. I gotta I gotta say special love. So all the ones that's out there suffering right here, right now, throughout this day and time, you know what I'm saying? I want you to know that Nick Fan TV, we can, we love, and we appreciate all y'all, all y'all support, all y'all watching, all y'all following, all of y'all tuning in. We're at late at night, staying up extra night, knowing you got to go to work in the morning. We appreciate it, man. We're doing it for you. We're doing it for the orange and blue, man. We love y'all. Keep doing what you're doing. Stay healthy. Stay safe. Protect yourself. Love your loved ones. Fathers, keep fathering your kids. Mothers, keep mothering your kids. Fathers and mothers, keep staying married. Keep taking that home, man. Appreciate it, man. A lot of things happened the other night, and I was appreciated, man, knowing that my voice could carry over and inspirate hey. somebody else, you know what I'm saying, in life. That made me feel great, man, for me to come home from prison and be out here and doing the right thing in life and being able to be an inspiring, and being, being, a, being an inspiration to somebody's life that I don't even know. And then to be able to go to a basketball game, I ain't even really enjoy the game. I had so many people coming at me. I was more focused on trying to show the other people love, appreciate it. I was happy. And I give all that great and that thanks, you know what I'm saying, to CP for making me this man who I am today. I don't even know this person. So I'm letting y'all all know right now, all y'all that have been just trying to so, uh, I'll, I'll snatch me up, get me to go here, go there. I ain't going nowhere. I'm loyal. That's what a Knicks fan is about. You got to be loyal, you know what I'm saying? That's one thing you learn about being a Nick. I'm loyal. I'm staying right here. Nick fan TV, this is my family. I love y'all. Everybody, have a great morning. Wake up tomorrow. Go get your money. If you ain't going to work, stay at home. Don't go outside. That thing is out there. It's not racist. It don't care who you are, what color you are. What city you from? What state you from, man? Peace. Y'all have a great morning. I love y'all. See y'all the, on the West Coast trip because we Let's out go. from the East. Let's go. J Boogie, throw a five in the wow. chat. Throw a 10 and in the listen, chat. Listen, if that's not a sermon, that the church said amen. Let's go. Okay? I, amen. I need J Boogie to come out with his own line yeah. 
of like wake up alarm sounds. Facts. Like I need him. You know how they have the fitness, the fitness thing, the mirror that you can train mm-hmm. with your trainer. I need him to make a line of bathroom mirrors that when I wake up and brush my teeth every morning, he's giving me a pep talk. Like you yeah. can go do this. You go out there and be great today. Hundred percent. Shake the 100%, world. Man. You know what I'm saying. Hundred percent. Yo, like I said, man, we appreciate you, Jay Boogie, man. Definitely appreciate you. Monday was epic. If we would have gotten a W, it would have been it would have been pandemonium on the streets of NYC, man. We would have taken over the whole city, but it, it, it was meant to be that way, man. And and uh, Knicks fan TV after dark was special, special moment with Jay Boogie. If you guys didn't see that, that I threw cool. that up on the channel as well. Yeah. My man Love from it. Orlando, you know, we just connecting people. That's just what it's all about. It's bigger than the team. It's bigger than the wins and losses. It's, it's a community of fans, and we're really just connecting. And uh, that's what I love to do. I've always been connecting people even before this. So just using this platform to do it globally is even more special.